Hey guys, I just wanted to let you know next week, Wednesday, July 27th at Mustang Week, we will be having a meetup at Let's Go Automotive. Dino will have the cars over there. I'll be hanging out there. So definitely check out the link in the description and we'll see you there. What is going on guys? We are back with the Predator Blower Swapped Terminator Cobra. This is a Gen 1 Coyote. So I want to give you guys an update video because uh, I uploaded this video and it was a pretty good hit. So I want to talk about the things that we're doing, the things that we're planning, and uh, a few things that are holding back uh, the reason why we have a little bit of a two week lull on getting this thing ripping on the dyno and on the track. So let's talk about a few of those things. If you don't already know, Mustang Lifestyle, we have a lot of really cool cars. Uh, this is our Boss Rear 2 uh, swap. This is actually Brad's car, so we're doing a Boss Rear 2 Coyote swap, whatever you want to call it. And we have all sorts of Mustangs. But specifically, we're talking about our 2004 Cobra Terminator convertible. I know a lot of people don't like convertibles. I don't really like convertibles either, but I got a killer deal on this car a while back. I made some videos on it. Uh, I've actually fallen in love with this car. So we have a Gen 1 Coyote engine. Heavily debated on the title of my last video, but uh, it is, it's GT500 swapped on the blower side of things. So you guys saw the startup video, the car runs. Sweet Cobra you got here, you know. It also does drive. We just took it off the trailer from Mustangs at Daytona. You can see the trailer right over there. Uh, so our big goal was get this out there and make sure we don't have to push it, you know, so it does move under its own power. So there are a few things that are gonna be holding us back from getting this running. Right now, we do have a return fuel system, but we have our old naturally aspirated setup. So we're just using a uh, single feed there. It's deadheaded with a Corvette Y fuel filter. We have our new uh, Division X 2020 GT500 fuel rails. Those are on the way. These are VMP 2020 GT500 rails. Um, there were some issues with them and it pulled some threads out on the mounting hardware and yeah, just didn't really work. So we got some Division X rails on the way. I'm going to get more into detail later on the belt drive system. And I also want to R&D a little bit more. Uh, we're going to make some block off plates um, for the map sensor. As you can see, we're just using tape to go ahead and block off the map sensors. This was just to be able to idle and drive it so we didn't have to push the car. One of the major things that holds this back and one of the really important factors of the reason why this worked, and this actually started the first try too, I knew that uh, the 2020 GT500 electronics we were not gonna work with our Gen 1 control pack. So we did go ahead and use a Gen 1 throttle body. I do also have a Ford Racing 90 mil. I am going to be turning up the power quite a bit on this thing down the line, but we have a Ford Racing 90 mil we're gonna put in here. I did use a stock uh, GT throttle body because I had to use quite a bit of RTV right here. If you guys notice, this is plastic. And in fact, the plastic has already warped and failed from just driving around. You can see it, it's starting to suck in the o-ring on the blower so obviously we're not going to be using plastic we are waiting for our cnc version of this this was for mock-up purposes only but i said hey you know it'll probably idle and drive as long as this seals up which it did on this side this side is starting to suck in that gasket so two major things is getting the fuel system knocked out getting our new throttle body adapter set up this cold air should work pretty well. It's kind of nice, large diameter um, mass airflow housing right here. So hopefully this doesn't become a restriction, especially as we start to turn this thing up. One other thing, if you notice, we're actually running a six rib out of eight ribs. It's very common on a blower for a Coyote car. Uh, a lot of the Whipple kits, the VMP kits, uh, Roush, a lot of them run six ribs. This will become a restriction once we start pushing this platform a little bit later on. But for right now, yes, it does in fact work. Running down the line, 
Also, you can see the intercooler pump heat exchanger stuff. I will show you guys what I have planned for it. And again, we're probably gonna end up upgrading it down the line. But this stuff is quite simple. Basically, uh, you got an in-out intercooler pump heat exchanger. There's nothing too fancy there. The only reason that is not done yet is because it's kind of last on the priority list because there's not much figuring out involved in that. This car obviously came with a factory heat exchanger, has room for it down there. So I'll show you guys my plan with that here in a little bit, but nothing too fancy there. There's nothing to figure out. It's very, very simple. So one other thing to think about, uh, obviously a GT500 has map sensor right there. Map sensor there, map sensor in the back. Obviously we need to seal these off, but we also need to get an IAT reading and a boost reading for our fuel system. So we're gonna be tapping the lid for our IAT split. We're gonna do a split off the mass airflow sensor because I thought that would be the simplest way. So we're gonna split harness here because this has IAT, but we're gonna change that into the tune to IAT2. Huge thanks to Rob at Palm Beach Dino. He's gonna be tuning this bad boy right here. Uh, and he's very excited to see what this thing's gonna do. So we will get that uh, IAT obviously ran in there and uh, that will be big help for keeping this engine alive, knowing when we need to pull timing uh, for higher temperatures. The other thing we gotta do is tap the cover for a boost reference. We need boost reference for our fuel pressure to go up. We also, it would be nice to know where the boost level is at. So that is that. We're gonna be running the stock supercharger pulley for right now. That is what we're gonna be running on this. Like I said, it does run and drive, uh, but I do have some more upgrades uh, for it and some future plans I'll talk about here in just a sec. One of the most controversial things about this car is it is an automatic, it's 6R80. But I think that's one of the reasons why this car is gonna be so deadly in the quarter mile and roll racing on the street. And uh, while it may be on street wheels here, this car has primarily lived on a drag pack. Uh, we just happen to have uh, some nice street wheels, but this will live on a drag pack. And this car has a 35 spline spool solid axle. This car I set up basically to do straight line stuff. Um, I don't plan to do anything crazy cage wise. Um, it does have a four point roll bar, but uh, the idea is street car, roll race, and uh, straight line. So that's what this car has been uh, basically designated for. This car does, however, have power steering and AC, very important things in Florida. So we're gonna go inside, I'll show you a few other parts that we got. So Mustangs in Daytona was last week and oh, I'm posting this video today because I just filmed it today. Um, but we are headed to Mustang Week. The Cobra is not gonna make it. Um, we got a few more parts and we really just, we don't wanna bring along a car that's not ready to drive. So we're bringing OG uh, over to Myrtle Beach. I'm very excited for that. Getting the trailer loaded up. Uh, we're only bringing one car this year, trying to make things simple. Bringing the enclosed trailer because we can have a lot more stuff in it. You see Brad over there, he's getting packed up. As for shop update, Turzillo running and driving. I just don't feel like bringing multiple cars and dealing with multiple different things. Um, GT500 was possibly on the list to go, but Brad and I decided to let's not rush getting it together and uh, let's get it back together when we get back. So we are of course bringing OG. Uh, we did have some issues at Mustangs at Daytona. We actually were able to find those out and we should be dialed, ready for Myrtle Beach, ready to hit the streets, shows, and whatever else we get ourselves into over there. All right, so what I have right here is an 07 to 12 GT500 heat exchanger. Uh, we are gonna be using this on the Cobra for now. It's just a setup to kind of get in there and get it working. Uh, we do have a 1314 intercooler pump and a 2020 GT500 intercooler pump that uh, we have the option of using. There is a possibility that I may eventually upgrade the heat exchanger that I have in my GT500. And if that happens, then I might pass this one down to the Cobra. This is the dual fan triple pass heat exchanger. So that one might get passed down to the Cobra. So we also have a set of ID1300X injectors. I just got the spacers for 2020 GT500, so it has the correct height for the rails. And the Ford Racing 90 mil. I think this will help uh, get the blower up and ready for uh, the higher horsepower. So that will work, and it works with Gen 1 electronics as well. So we will be getting to the Cobra when we get back from Mustang Week. Like I talked about at the beginning of the video, uh, 
definitely check out the Wednesday Dino Day event. I think we're gonna throw OG on the dino, see what it puts out. I have the link down in the description. I will bring the merch, the car out there, will be out there, and it uh, should be a good time. You guys can get your car on the dyno. Uh, Let's Go Automotive also has fuel E85 all week, and you can also uh, get in there if you have some sort of major issue with your car. Uh, they also do sometimes uh, help out with some repairs during the week. So as for the Terminator, uh, when we get back, we're gonna be dialing in the fuel system, all the little odds and ends, and getting it ready to dyno tune, track test. My goal is to go nines on stock motor, that Gen 1 Coyote, we're gonna be pushing it to its limit. I don't know how much boost this blower is going to make because it's a stock pulley, but there's a different diameter, it's different compression ratio, different heads from 2020 GT500. So my goal is to make somewhere around 700 on E85. It might make 800, it might make 600. We don't know how much boost it's going to make. We can obviously change pulley size down the line and ultimately I'm probably going to end up doing a Gen 3 short block swap on it, port the blower, lower pulley, 8 rib swap, and uh, Get it ready for, I don't know, 900, 1,000 horsepower and have an eight second convertible. Sounds like fun, right? <laughs> anyway guys, uh, make sure you hit the like button, comment down below. Um, I have been looking into making some of these parts for these swap kits. If anyone has a blower, a uh, 2020 GT500 blower laying around that you want to sell, let us borrow or whatever for R&D, um, I was thinking about starting to make some sort of these different components and uh, if you guys have something like that, let me know. Um, if it's like $4,500 or more, probably going to pass because I got a pretty good deal on mine. But uh, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. I know I've increased the value of these things a lot in the market, so I've been seeing them go way up since I posted this video. But anyways, hit the like button, leave a comment, and we will see you guys in the next one. Yeah.